Good morning, everybody. What a long journey you've been on. But the amazing part of your journey is that the reason you're in this room, the 2022 Young African Leadership Institute Mandela Washington Fellows, is what you have already done in your life. You are leaders already, lawyers, activists, podcast uh, producers, civic development, economic development, gender uh, advocates, all that already at your young age. I know something about what it feels like to be responsible at a young age. But as you come together, I think when we talk to most of the groups, the astounding discovery that they have is finding other people from Africa like themselves. You may have gone through that already with this group. Because sometimes you're out there in your own community, your own nation, your own friends, your own neighborhood, and you feel like, am I the only person on earth trying to seek justice? Am I the only one here who cares about whether the water is clean? whether the people have a chance to vote. Am I the only one? And so one of the things that we hope from you coming together is that you draw strength from each other and that you will know from now on that I can call my brother in Botswana. I can call my friend in Dagambia. I can call my friend in Tanzania and Zimbabwe. I got friends who care about the things that I care about. Now, when you come here, you know, some people are overawed by the United States of America, you know, the big highways and the tall buildings and all that. And so it, it, it makes them come here and think, oh, my God, you know, what, what can I learn here? I have to learn so much, but I don't think that's really true. We don't want you here thinking that America is perfect. We are far from that. And indeed, the founders in the preamble to the Constitution talked about it being ordained and established in order to help build a more perfect union. Now, the leaders of America at the beginning knew that what they had put down was not perfect. And so basically, when you come to America, you come to a nation all these years later that is still in the midst of the turmoil and the struggle of finding itself and pushing itself towards perfection, which means that not only do you come here and you may learn something from the professors who teach you and people who talk to you and other people that you meet, but we get to learn from you too. So when you sit at these round tables and these issues come up about what do you think of this and what do you think of that, do not be shy. It is your time to speak out and speak up, to be heard by your fellow uh, uh, members of this committee, but also to be heard by people like me and the deans and the other leaders here, because every now and then, kaboom, you say something and it's a bright idea. You've seen that in your life already? You just come up with something that you didn't know, and then everybody says, oh my God, man, where'd you get that from? That's brilliant. And so in the mix of all these discussions, with all the ideas being thrown about, with all the lessons that you're going to learn, there's this chance that we all learn from each other and we make things better by doing so. Now, one of the things I've talked about at this institution and others is the Greek concept of what it took to be a citizen. And they said that in order for you to be a proper citizen of a Greek city-state, you needed to have the skills of freedom. Now, the skills of freedom, they would call the ars liberalis. We have distorted that into what we call the liberal arts, and people don't know what the hell they're talking about when they talk of the liberal arts because they think it's liberal. It ain't conservative. There's got to be something wrong with it. But the liberal arts were nothing but the skills of freedom. And you, some of you know, I see you shaking your heads, that the first level of the skills of freedom for the Greeks was the trivium. It was grammar, logic, rhetoric. You had to speak well, think well, and write well. Oh, see, somebody knows all this already, right here. But just think now, as you're on this journey, in, in, in your age as middle level executives and beginning lawyers and whatever you are, if you start now learning to think well, speak well, write well, in other words, put it down, 
Make it so somebody can understand it. Make it so they can follow the thread of your argument. Make it so that what you propose is overwhelming when people hear it. You know how people sometimes, oh my Lord, I never thought about it like that. That's what we want you to be able to do. It takes some effort. You got to read a lot of books and papers. You got to think by yourself sometimes. You walk along the beach and think. You sit in a chair in a corner sometimes and think. You talk to your friends and think together. But this is what we're talking about. We're talking about nation builders. I mean, the skills that you guys have right now, if we just put you all, all on an island, you could create a government. You've got the skills for that. You could create a banking system. You've got skills for that. You can create a court system right now, y'all. You could have children educated, all that, with what you know right now. How much better is it going to be when you put it all together and understand that you draw from each other and that you're not islands? You know, that no man is an island, no woman is an island thing. Y'all got that, don't you? But this is what we are hoping for. This is what makes you so strong. Now, in my life, there have been setbacks, and people say that the setbacks are good. Now, I got to tell you, when you're in the midst of a setback, it don't feel good. Huh? When you hope that the project was going to do a certain thing, and it doesn't, you go, oh, my God. But they claim that when we have the setbacks, they, the scholars, you know, the people all the day, I'm just a lawyer. Guy. I don't do all the sociology and the anthropology and the statistics and all that, but they claim that when we have these setbacks, we rebound, we get stronger, we know the next time the mistakes that we made and not to make the mistakes going forward. So I guess it's a good perspective to have that as you do the work that you do in the nations that you come from, that you remember a setback is not a killer. A setback is the beginning for change that could be better the next time. And but in my own life, for example, now you heard her talk about me doing poetry and all this. Well, my granddaddy, when I was a baby, when I was four years old, he figured out I had this powerful memory, so he teaches me classical poetry. I go to help integrate the schools. Y'all heard about that, like desegregation, integration, segregation, all that in America. You do know about that, don't you? You know it won't always white and black people together, you know, working on the same part. You understand that, right? So in my life, I went to the segregated schools. You know, all the black people over here, the white people over there, you go down the street, the white people live here and all that, you heard of it. So I get sent to the white school in high school and I've been reciting poetry all my life because my granddaddy took me when I was a baby and taught me poems. I'm in this advanced English course and I get to school one day and we had to write this poem or a short story or an essay well, I found out with 25 minutes to go that the deadline was that day. The reason for it is you didn't have no white friends or nothing then. And so like when you weren't in school, wasn't nobody calling you saying, hey man, you got your report ready for tomorrow? Because I was the only black kid in the class and so I forgot. I get in there and I write this poem the first time. I turn it in, the teacher comes over, after the class forms, she holds my poem like this and she throws it in my face and she says, I reject this. Isn't that horrible? But I wound up on stage at Carnegie Hall in New York with people from William and Mary and I recited that poem at the beginning and the end of the concert. And when I was on the Supreme Court, this woman calls me and said, John Thomas, yes ma'am, will you send me a copy of that poem you wrote? when you were in my class, and I actually said yes ma'am, but I never sent the poem. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I'll tell you the poem. Let's see, I'm about, I was 17. Y'all are older than that now, but I was just a 17 year old kid in this environment that was kind of hostile. And I wrote this poem called The Morning. And I said, the morning is the time for man to rise. Review the things that formed his past. Make all his disappointments and mistakes quite clear, so they will be his last. The morning is the time for man to think of all the things to come, to plot, to plan, to try his best, to be ahead when day is done. The morning is the time for man to dream of things not yet conceived, to gather his thoughts and ideas round the things that he alone believes. The morning is the time for man to rise and think, and dream and see that all the world depends on men 
who with thoughts of hope the day began. Now, I was a 17-year-old boy. I write that part. <laughs> But look, I don't think it just depends on men. I think it depends on men and women. But you know, that was a long time ago, and I was a boy thinking about Jesus. I got to write this poem in 15 minutes. And so that was the best I could do. Maybe I'll go back and fix that poem to include the men and the women, just like in Hamilton, where, where, where she says, I'm going to talk to Jefferson and fix this thing about all men are created equal. You know that from the play? She said, it's going to be men and women in the second draft. I think that's what we have to depend on, and that's what we have to hope for. So, so much depends on you. Coming here that long, I've been that long flight. I've been over to Kenya, I've been to Nairobi, and Nabasha, and Akuru, I've been to the Masamora, and all that, yeah. So it's a long, long trip that everybody has been on, and you may be settled down now, ready for what is facing you. But so much depends on you, because if you do all the things that you are called upon to do, if you live up to like the hope that's within your soul. If you depend on these people and make new connections and talk to each other and write down names and addresses, if you do all that, then this poem that Kipling wrote, this white man from England, and everybody says he doesn't have the best reputation, but you know, scripture says somewhere that what men do for evil, God do for good changes to good. Well, I like what Kipling said, but I, you know, I'm a poet, so I get to mess with words that people use to change them around to how I want to. But remember the poem. He, he says, if you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn, long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will that says to them, hold on. If you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue or talk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the world and everything that is in it, and which is more, you will have uplifted someone. That's my message to you. I hope the best for you.